Hello, good afternoon. Today we will start Fauzea sheet answers. First question. Uh, the pressure within the pore space is negative with respect to atmospheric pressure, except for the chosen falling uh, during the Zalpa maneuver. So the pressure is negative during anything apart from Valsalva. Valsalva, when you pinch your nose closed and close your mouth and try to take as much air as you can. Like inflating a balloon. Bear down and as if having a bowel movement. Do this for about 10 to 15 seconds. This will increase the pressure inside the nasal sinuses and inside the, the chest cavity, used for restoring the heart rhythm, diagnosis uh, autonomic nervous system disorders. Next question. Uh, 30 years old alcoholic man present with acute severe upper abdominal pain and vomiting. He is admitted to intensive therapy unit with a diagnosis of severe acute pancreatitis. 48 hours later, he developed peripheral paresthesia uh, and carbopedal spells. The most likely underlying metabolic abnormality is hypocalcemia. What the name of these signs, please? Uh, Chubastic sign. Uh, Truzo sign? I don't, I yeah, don't know. sign and the Chubastic sign. Chubastic sign is the twitching of the facial muscles in, responsing, in response to tapping over the area of the facial nerve, in front of the trigus. Trousseau sign is a carbobedal spasm by inflating the blood pressure cuff to a level above systolic for three minutes. These signs are for hypocalcemia due to removal of uh, the parathyroid with thyroidectomy or in pancreatitis. So hypocalcemia would be the answer. Next question, please. A uh, 50 years old uh, woman attend her general practitioner due to change in appearance. She finds difficulty removing her rings, report an increase in show size, uh, and photographs reveal a change in her facial appearance. Visual field uh, tests are performed to direct the confrontation, which of the following defects is most likely to be associated with, his, uh, with her presentation. Uh, temporal hemianobia. So why did you say that? Why did you say that? Uh, because the patient has a pituitary tumor uh, with, uh, release, with increased um, growth hormone, uh, which lead to bitemporal hemianopia. So if you look at the facial nerve here, if I ask it about the optic nerve lesion, then it will be optic asthma. It's lateral blindness yeah. okay this is optic nerve will be lost in one eye but if we are going to ask about optic asthma, we have two things middle lesion the crossing fibers will be affected this will cause bilateral heteronymous hemianopia and if bilateral lesions non-crossing fibers this will lead to binasal hemianopia Bi and if we are going to ask about craniopharyngioma from above, this will lead to lower bitemporal hemianopia, lower quadrant small right. And bitemporal adenoma from down, this will cause upper bitemporal hemianopia more. But if we are going to ask about optic tract or lateral geniculate nucleus, this will lead to contralateral homonymous hemianopia, and both caused by middle cerebral artery infarction. In optic radiation, you will remember CQ and PETS. CQ means contralateral quadrantanopia, and PETS means parietal inferior, contralateral quadrantanopia, and temporal loop, so PETS means parietal inferior and temporal superior. Temporal will cause superior, contralateral quadrantanopia. And this 
caused by lesion on temporal or parietal lobes. If I'm going to ask about the visual cortex, this will be going uh, to be injury in the posterior cerebral artery, PCA infarction, located because the visual cortex is located in the calcarine sulcus of the occipital loop. So this will lead to contralateral homonymous hemianopsia with macular spaling, sparing. Yeah. So you are correct then. Thank you so much. Next question. Next question, please. Uh, a 24 years old man for his motorbike fracturing his uh, one arm, pulls for femurs and rupturing his spleen. He required surgery and 20, 20 units of blood. Uh, 24 hours after admission, he has passed through 350 ml of urine. His blood pressure is now uh, 90 over 50. And he has low skin turbulence, which is all on the subscribe the changes in renal and retin cell system initiated at the direct trigonometric apparatus of the patient. So, uh, 12 E. So, E, why E? Because uh, hypovolemia will lead to increased renin secretion, uh, which leads to, to a conversion of angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1, and by uh, angiotensin, angiotensin converting uh, Enzyme D2 angiotensin 2 renin the, and the serum system and serum, uh, yes very nice so as you said the substrate of renin is angiotensinogen from the liver renin will convert this substrate angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 and the angiotensin 1 by angiotensin converting enzyme in, uh, by the lung will be converted into angiotensin 2 that will cause direct vasoconstriction and stimulate aldosterone as well. Very nice. By the way, the first response to hypotension is baroreceptor activation. This is first and in, it will be brief. Later on will be her hormonal response to hypotension. It will be RAS system. This will be late but will be prolonged response. Next, number five. A uh, 35 years old woman present to emergency department with a second attack, printed prank in Missouri with the most likely pathology, uh, gram negative urinary tract infection. So the most common cause of uh, UTI is E. coli. And this question is not going to be cancer because cancer is painless. So, Simply, it is gram-negative urinary tract infection. Not in interstitial cystitis because we posted before the features of interstitial cystitis. Okay, so this is wrong, and the question is asking about UTI. Next question. It doesn't appear. A 60 years old man present with a short history of pain in right cheek uh, and right upper teeth, maxillary sinus infection is diagnosed. The sinus is particularly prone to infection because of uh, the relationship of the front teeth to the floor of the sinus. Very nice. This is going to be E, and E and T can confuse in this question because it might be position of the sinus ostium and it can be E, but the more correct in relation to this question would be E. Okay. Okay, let's continue. A 75 years old insulin dependent diabetic man has undergone a hemicolectomy on the first Post-operative day, he is nail by mouse on sub, uh, subcutaneous insulin, maintenance IV infusion with saline and intravenous morphine via patient-controlled analgesia. He is confused after a brief convulsion. Uh, he uh, has slurred speech and weakness of his right side. His pulse is uh, 110 feet per minute and respiratory rate 25 breaths per minute and blood pressure 160 over 95. Uh, and the uh, situation uh, 95 
on room A. The most likely cause of their convulsion is hypoglycemia. So apparently here, you are seeing that this patient is complaining of hypoglycemia features because of starvation, because of high insulin dose, because of many things, okay? So this is, these are features of hypoglycemia then. Next one. A uh, 30 years old woman uh, present uh, to the general surgical clinic with 1.5 uh, centimeter cervical lymph node along the anterior border sternocleidomastoid muscle. Clinical examination and routine blood tests are unremarkable. She undergo an exogenous biopsy of the lump as a day case. The histology report reveals um, encapsulated infiltrated carcinoma of, uh, with marked fibrosis and cystic changes with, within the lymph node. What the most likely primary diagnosis pathology? Uh, uh, Babillary thyroid carcinoma. So I have here just a mnemonic for you or just a, a collection for you to remember. So if I asked you about blood spread, you are going to say? Follicular carcinoma. Follicular. Lymph, papillary, calcitonin, medullary. Oh, you have also to think about men type 2A and 2B syndromes. Okay, A and B syndromes. So if you have uh, parathyroid hyperplasia, few chromocytoma, medullary thyroid carcinoma, this is type 2A. Type 2B, when you have like uh, what's called like uh, morphonoid body habitus and uh, mandibular osteomas and soft tissue sarcomas maybe and you will add to that medullary thyroid carcinoma and also few chromocytoma this is medullary compressive manifestations you will rapidly grow in compressing anaplastic if you are going to have like Hashimoto and asking about a uh, type of lymphoma, it will be B cell lymphoma. Okay. Next one. Okay. 37 years old, men present with severe headache, photophobia, and neck stiffness. Kerning sign is positive, and uh, midline lumbar blanketure is performed immediately to determine if a supraspinal fluid pathogen is involved in performing this procedure, which is the first of the following structures to be pierced by the lumbar blanketure needle. Uh, the first is an in, uh, interspinous ligament. Very nice. Here you will be like uh, asking about the, 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 the layers, so skin, and fascia, subcutaneous fat, uh, fascia, and then you have supraspinous ligament, interspinous ligament, ligamentum flavum, and then the extradural or epidural is the same thing, space, then dura, then uh, arachnoid matter, and then subarachnoid. If you need to reach the epidura, you already reach it before the dura. And if you want to reach the subarachnoid, so you have last layer, will be blurred is the arachnoid. Okay? So the first layer following the structure to be blurred is supraspinous ligament followed by interspinous ligament. The la last layer is arachnoid matter. Next one. A 26 year old woman presents with severe headache, photophobia, and neck stiffness. The investigations done lumbar puncture to show Neisseria meningitis. This is bacterial infection. And then you have to think about uh, neutrophils. neutrophils as a primary cells of acute bacterial inflammatory response. Next question. A 70 years old woman from a nursing home present to the emergency department with abdominal pain vomiting. On examination, she is dilated and her abdomen is distended. Three, three, uh, three centimeter by four centimeter swelling in her right groin, which is non tendered. There is no cuff impulse. At operation, femoral hernia found, which of the following lie immediately to the neck of the hernia. 
like more ligaments. So you have to think about the femoral canal boundaries as Sorry. So, as you see here, the boundaries of the femoral canal lateral, you have here the femoral uh, vein, and here you will find the black. This is the femoral canal and lateral, the femoral vein. That's why it's going to be distending here. And also you have uh, the medial lacunar ligament. This is medially here, as you see here. And anterior, this will be this structure, the inguinal ligament and posterior bictinial ligament. So this is the femoral canal. You have laterally the femoral vein to distend with it, and the anterior, the inguinal ligament, posterior bictinian, and medial will be lacunar ligament. So the, the, the lateral structure will be what will be uh, femoral, the vein. femoral uh, vein. And this is the lateral and medial lacunar ligament. Okay, so medial lacunar ligament. Next one. A 26 years old man present to the emergency department with extensive bleeding from his arm after sustaining a glass injury. On examination, uh, there is a seven centimeter transverse laceration across the anterior aspect of his elbow. On exploring the cubit of fossa, you would expect the brachial artery to be uh, brachial artery lateral to the median nerve. So don't forget that you will have the brachial artery like this, okay? This is the brachial artery here, and the brachial artery is in place like this, okay? And you have the nerves that moves. So you will have the nerve will be lateral, then anterior, then comes medial. So the median nerve will be lamb, lateral, anterior, and then medial to the artery in the cubital fossa. So if you, I asked you about the cubit, cubital fossa, you will remember the word uh, tan, tendon, artery, and then most medial is the nerve. Next one. A 52-year-old man is found to have multiple myeloma. What you what uh, you will have in the X-ray? So you have to know the CRAPS criteria or CRAP. Uh, this is like uh, calcium. What else regarding the CRAP criteria of multiple myeloma? Uh, we'll calcium. See, uh, and uh, what? Renal dysfunction uh, and bone disease, one more than one lytic lesion on X ray or CT or PET CT scan. So you have to remember the CRAB criteria calcium is high, renal dysfunction, anemia, and bone uh, defects, multiple osteolytic lesions, warm eaten appearance. Next one. A 50 years old woman present with a history of right upper quadrant pain and joints. She reports that her urine was dark uh, in color and that her stools are offensive and difficult to flush, uh, which in the following explains the dark urine. Uh, increase in conjugated bilirubinuria. So the conjugated bilirubin inside the liver will not be able to reach the uh, Duodenum through the CBD because of, there is obstructive jaundice, obstruction in the CBD. So this direct bilirubin will go back to the blood 
direct is soluble, direct bilirubin conjugated and soluble. It will be excreted and will be responsible for the black urine color. So because of increased conjugated bilirubin. Next one. Uh, 45 years old uh, uh, man present with headache uh, and leg pain due to prolapsed lumbar intervertebral disc. The pain, uh, which is aggravated by coughing and sneezing, radiates the lateral aspect of the foot. On examination, there is weakness of plantar flexion on the foot, which nerve root is one. So your answer is? S1. S1, very nice. So regarding dermatomes, it's very important to put a picture inside uh, your book to find every dermatome. So lateral foot, lateral foot is supplied by S1. Next one. Uh, uh, 62 years old woman present to general practitioner with two week history of back pain. She lost eight centimeter in height over the last five years. Investigation reveals corrected calcium 2.7 phosphate 0.8, estimated GFR 90, paracormone uh, 8.9. So this would be Primary hyperparathyroidism. Primary hyperparathyroidism. I posted many times a lecture regarding pseudo hypothyroidism and different types of metabolic bone disease, and also primary, secondary, and tertiary hyperparathyroidism. So please note that this question is being repeated every exam. So you have to understand that regarding this man, renal function is normal, calcium is mildly elevated, phosphate is normal, and parathormone is just elevated. So this is going to be a secondary hyperparathyroidism due to osteomalacia and low vitamin D. So it's answered wrong here because she lost eight centimeter in height over the last five years. So this is characteristic for a secondary hyperparathyroidism due to osteomalacia. If this is primary, you will find calcium uh, high and you will find phosphate is but calcium here is high. Calcium here is high, not low. Yes. Yeah, so this is a primary one. Yeah. So just to be clear, last thing. If the value like the previous one, it will be hypercalcemia, and this is going to be primary because adenoma. And uh, as we said, the high parathormone will lead to increase in the bone resorption, so will be associated loss of height. But in the exam question, if this calcium is being to be low, this means that this is vitamin D deficiency and you have to select as osteomyelitia as a secondary one. So again, regarding this question, if you will see this number here, sorry, yeah, here, if you will see this number here, like this, yeah, sorry, this number, if we have hypercalcemia, this means that this is a primer, and the gland itself, the, the parathyroid gland, release more calcium because of adenoma, 85%, or uh, hyperplasia in 10%, or 9%, and 1% carcinoma, so the primary is a gland releasing high parathormone that will cause high uh, calcium with loss of height as well because it will cause bone resorption. But if this number is going to be like this, as the exam question, this means that 
this lady got some sort of osteomalacia and low vitamin D. Uh, this will lead to secondary hyperparathyroidism. Not all secondary hyperparathyroidism because of affection of the kidney, so th that's why you have normal EGFR. So according to the calcium, if the initiator of the parathormone to be high is the gland itself because of adenoma, then you will have high calcium. But if the low calcium because of renal failure or because of osteomalacia, low vitamin D, or rickets in children, the low calcium will be the initiator for the high parathormone. So in this case, if I will not select in any answer, now you understand that if the calcium is low, this will lead to initiation of hyperparathyroidism secondarily. But if you have primary hyperparathyroidism in the gland, you will have hypercalcemia. We have finished. Next one. Yeah, this uh, is yeah, use atrophy. Yeah, fracture of radius and not used. This is disuse atrophy. Stabbed left fifth intercostal space at the edge of the sternum. The right ventricle is covering most of the right on uh, most of the anterior surface of the heart. This will be affected uh, in the stab. So RV right ventricle will be more affected. Next one. Emergency abduction of the arm is initiated uh, with uh, inability to initiate. This is the supraspinal muscle. Uh, this question, eight-year-old boy, this is called juvenile rectal polyp. Abdominal pain and bloody diarrhea in this age, this is a second distribution or a bimodal distribution of ulcerative colitis and extra insulin manifestations, most commonly arthritis with recent visual problems like episcleritis or conjunctivitis. This is going to be ulcerative colitis. The most common feature of ulcerative colitis, extra insulin, is arthritis. Next one. Yeah, we discussed this question. We said that uh, the serum alkaline phosphatase is mildly high and serum amylase is high as well. So this going to be uh, acute abdo pain with guarding in the abdomen. This may be alcohol or cholidocolitis or hyperparathyroidism. But here you have hypercalcemia. So hypercalcemia means that you have a reason to have high calcium with the presence of pancreatitis. Alcohol will not explain this, despite gamma GT or however, uh, although gamma GT is mildly elevated, but this is not the elevation of alcohol. Alcohol will markedly increase the gamma GT. So it's not alcohol you pancreatitis. Additionally, alcohol will not explain the hypercalcemia because if you have alcohol induced pancreatitis, the pancreatitis will lead mostly to hypocalcemia and not hypercalcemia. So it's not alcohol. If we are going to talk colidocolithiasis, again, colidocolithiasis will raise alkaline phosphatase, of course, maybe at the beginning of uh, obstructed CBD, but this will not explain the hypercalcemia as well. So hyperparathyroidism alone can explain the hypercalcemia with pancreatitis. If you remember, I get smashed are mnemonics for the etiology of uh, pancreatitis. So you have idiopathic, you have gallstones, you have alcohol, you have steroids, drugs, you have mumps, you have hyperlipidemia, you have hyperparathyroidism, mumps, hypercalcemia. Hyperparathyroidism and hypercalcemia can explain the full scenario. So the answer would be C. Next one. Uh, yeah, this is Cushing response, bradycardia, hypertension, and irregular breathing. This is why, because of the uh, central chemoreceptors in the vasomotor center in the medulla will be activated. Why? Because of this equation. Uh, just one minute. You have 
CBB, cerebral perfusion pressure, equals MAP minus ICP. So MAP means mean arterial pressure, ICP, intracranial pressure, and cerebral perfusion pressure is here. So if you have any reason, raise this uh, ICP, you will have reduced in cerebral perfusion pressure. So your body will do what? By central chemoreceptors will raise the mean arterial pressure. Okay, so mean arterial pressure will be elevated by what? By central chemoreceptors, vasomotor center in the medulla will activate sympathetic and sympathetic will cause a hypertension. And then activation of aortic bar receptors will lead to bradycardia. And compression of the respiratory center will lead to uh, what? Will lead to uh, irregular breathing. So why again? CBB yeah. equal MAP minus RCP. So cerebral perfusion pressure will what? Will reduce when you have high I intracerebral pressure. Cerebral perfusion pressure when reduced, this is the pressure needed to deliver the blood to the brain. So what will happen? What will happen is uh, ischemia in the vasomotor center in the medulla, this will lead to ischemia means BAO2 reduced, so this will stimulate central chemoreceptors and will lead to sympathetic stimulation and activation of uh, mean arterial pressure will increase hypertension. Uh, again, what is the transperineal muscles or cardinal ligament mentioned in many question banks differently? But the main support of the uterus is what? Transverse perineal muscle. It is the same. Central perineal. Central perineal tendon. Next one. Um, uh, eight years old, man admitted surgical admission. Central abdominal pain, blood pressure normal, uh, pulse uh, 110, respiratory 25. Severe chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, been the smoker all his life. With rigid abdomen, um, pH low, acidotic, uh, PCO2 uh, with normal range, bipolar low, so it will be metabolic acidosis due to peritonitis. Exactly. So he is trying to cheat us by mentioning many things, but we know the base excess is low, bicarbonate is low. And this metabolic cause can explain this, sorry, this acidosis. So this, sorry, this BH will be explained by the low bicarb. So this means that metabolic acidosis, but PACO2 is not retained and not trying to compensate for this metabolic acidosis. Who will compensate metabolic acidosis? Mud bile's will cause what's called HAGMA or high anion gap metabolic acidosis and NAGMA or normal anion gap metabolic acidosis to have hard up. And the mnemonic is explained in the lecture. So here it's metabolic acidosis due to peritonitis. Next question. Uh, SA node will not receive directly from vagus nerve. If increased directly, this will be wrong. But it will receive from the vagus nerve through the cardiac plexus. Okay. Next one. Uh, fit 21 years old man uh, admitted with an acute abdomen, subsequently diagnosed as gastroenteritis, 
part of host uh, immune response, which of the following immune globulin and cells are correctly buried? Uh, IgG and the plasma cells. IgG and the plasma cells. IgE with eosinophils. IgE. Uh, okay. Epithelial surface epithelium. Okay. Next one. Uh, 45 years old, the man uh, present with fever, pain, and right loin, and, and in his right loin and groin. Uh, soft swelling noted in general triangle, diagnosis source abscess, which is the following statement more accurate regarding source measure. Arise from lateral border of the, uh, of the body of T12 to L5. T12 to L5, and with superficial and deep parts, and it will not extend the hip, it is a flexor of the hip. It inserts into lesser trochanter with iliopsoas tendon, and it's innervated uh, from which nerves? Uh, so the psoas major innervated by direct branches of the anterior rami of L1 to 3. Iliacus by the femoral nerve, which is composed from the the remai of L2 to 4. Okay, the femoral nerve from posterior remai. Okay. So, as, as uh, we told before, the uh, psoas measure is supplied by L1, 2, 3. And we told you as well. The femoral nerve will arise from what? From the uh, dorsal divisions of the ventral remi of L2, L3, and L4. Next one. What one of the following muscle is an extensor of the hip? Summit and denosis. Okay, so the hamstring muscles are semi tendinosus, semi membranosus uh, medially, and biceps femoris laterally. We have finished the first part. Please wait for the second part. Thank you so much.